We've just been hearing the fascinating story of how Dell Technologies have enabled aero farms to create really the food chain of the future. I'm delighted to be joined by Nigel Moulton, who's Chief Technical Officer EMEA for Dell EMC. Welcome to Thank the you. TM Thanks studio. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay, let's start with Aero Farms number one, just to make certain that we understand quite what it is that you've enabled him at a techni technical level. So the, the technology that, that David employs and the farming methodologies that they use, I think are relatively unique. Um, what you can think about this in a way as if you took the Six Sigma principle and you applied it to agriculture, what AeroFarms is, is what you might end up with, right? So the combination of a lean process and how you then marry a set of technologies that help you deliver Six Sigma, in this case in agriculture, with the added benefit that it's in brownfield facilities. It's faci facilities that might have very low yield and use if it weren't for somebody as innovative as AeroFarms coming in and saying we can occupy this space and we can apply Six Sigma and we can apply technology to actually grow something. So I think in there there's a couple of stories. One is the lean process and two is how technology actually helps you enable that. I wonder if what it means is that you can actually go in with the kind of technologies you have at your disposal and, and custom build something for somebody who has got what is a very different business model. Yeah, so the ultimate end goal if you're a startup in, in, in the manufacturing space is remember there's a high capital cost associated with disrupting things in the manufacturing space. It takes a lot of money, it takes people, it takes time. So if you look at what you can do as an existing manufacturer of pretty much anything, you can tinker at the, you can tinker at the edges of your business process by introducing technology which allows you to measure something more accurately and drive perhaps a reduction in cost or an increase in efficiency in how that thing that you make gets made. Okay? As you learn from that, you can start to apply those learnings to perhaps more fundamental parts of the business process, to change the way that you serve a customer, to change the way that you have an order placed, right? So you can start at the edge of the process where you can see some quite quick and interesting results, I think, but then what that needs to do is to be enabled throughout the business because you're digitizing the process. And I always think it's sometimes easier to start at the edge of the process than, than right in the core of it because what you do at the edge you can see the peripheral effect it has. It changes the business process in some way. Well, it, obviously, we're here in Liverpool at the moment. Yep. Um, the government has announced the first part of its uh, uh, Made Smarter initiative with the Northwest Pilot. They're putting money into yep. helping companies understand what the, the potential, the huge potential of digitalizing their businesses. And you're absolutely right. I was talking to Jürgen Meyer about this yesterday. Um, he, of course, has driven the, the Made Smarter process and, and brought us almost to where we are now. And he, he was saying, you can do this bit by bit. You do yep. not have to change things overnight. You can, as you say, start at the edge, work your way in, and measure the incremental gains you're getting. Right, so we were at a conference hosted by Bloomberg a couple of days ago, and one of the questions that CEOs, CEOs were asked was about how do you go about doing this? What are some of the challenges that you see? The answer that got the least responses was ideas. We're not short of ideas. There are people out there, massively creative, working in organizations who can see a way of improving something or, or making a change that is beneficial to to the business, right? The culture in the organization needs to be one that allows those ideas to be promoted, to flourish. And again, in, in the IT industry, you'll hear about people who talk about a culture where you enable somebody to fail, but fail quickly. The sort of softer version of that is to allow them to fall. A skier learns how to find the edges of his skis and they fall in the process, right? You get up, you dust yourself off, you go on again. So if you have a culture that is enabling people in your organization to pull forth these ideas that you then invest in and you might be using money that the government's providing, you might be using private capital to do it, ideas doesn't seem to be the problem. It's more a culture around allowing experiments and expertise to flourish in areas that are non-traditional, that you might be scared of, but unless you actually are prepared to push the boundary and go and figure out and learn what this can do, you're never going to go forward. I think that the, 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 the culture, the people yes. element of it, uh, we were at a, a dinner the other night discussing just this same thing about don't talk to me about industrial digitalization unless you're going to tell me how I'm going to sell this 
to the people I work with and the right. people who work for me. Because if they don't want it and if they don't buy into it, well, I'm not going to either. Yeah, so there's, a, there's actually a brilliant quote, which is, you know, you don't need a digital strategy. You need a better strategy enabled by digital. And what I think we've been talking about is essentially that. The way in which you make money today fundamentally doesn't change. The thing you do, you still generate profit from. Enabling that digitally is what we've talked about, which is finding ways of bringing digital processes and digital ideas into that whole process that allows you to optimize it, drive greater efficiency around it. You might not be able to sell it for a higher price, but you might be able to generate bottom line improvement, so operating margin improves. So sometimes people look for, for you know, high revenue returns on some of these projects. That might not always be the right place to look. So I think the principles are the same in terms of what digitization can do. It's where you look and how you implement it day one. Get people comfortable with it, celebrate success. These are cultural things in organizations where we've seen this work. These are some of the traits that we see. If you hype this up, in some ways you're asking for trouble. So if you set a set of expectations where our, we have an idea, we are going to explore the idea, it's an adjacency to the business that we currently run, we might end up partnering with organizations that we have never heard of, but who can see value in the thing that we create. And until you go on that journey, you never know. So to some extent, I, I think that's right, but at the same time, there are instances where actually these revenue models have been significant, and they have been at an adjacency to what the core business was. So that brings us back to the ideas, of course. Yes. The other, <clears throat> pardon me, the other problem is the word problem because sometimes okay. these technologies are brought to manufacturers as, I've got a solution to your problem. And the manufacturers may say, well, actually I don't have a problem yeah. right now. Um, I'm doing pretty well. I may not be you know, busting everybody's chops on this, but I am doing okay. So why would I need to change everything? And it's, it's the classic start with why. Yeah. You know, if there, if there genuinely is a problem, and it's, sometimes it's cultural in an organization, Sometimes you know, you're looking at a manufacturing process and you're deciding that it's, it's actually inefficient and can be improved. So if the organization goes out looking for a way to solve that, then folks that have invented something, you're welcome to the table, right? I think if you blindly knock on the door and say, I actually think I know your business better than you do, it's not always a good starting point. Okay, well listen, Nigel, thank you so much for joining us on TM Studio. Um, I really hope that uh, we're going to see a lot more of you. Yeah, it's been um, a pleasure. Thank yeah, you. It's uh, Nigel Moulton, uh, who's CTO, EMEA for Dell, Dell EMC. That's Many great. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you. Much.